I was logging into my insurance company website to pay my car insurance bill, and I noticed something was new. In addition to logging in with the traditional method of using a username and password, I saw a new box that says log in with pass key. Now pass keys are actually not new at all as I've been using them for secure logins to other computer systems for years. They're not even that new for logins to websites like Google and other geeky places, but they are starting to become a commonplace for websites that non-techies would use on a daily basis, like an insurance company or a government property tax administrator. In this video, let's explore what passkeys are and how they may or may not replace those pesky passwords. So, what is a passkey and how is it different than a password? Well, let's take a look at the different ways of logging into a website. The traditional way is that when you sign up for a website, you will need to create a username and a password. This way, supposedly only you have the password and you will be the only person who can log into your account. Theoretically, this is true, but because people suck and they want to steal your stuff, you need to create passwords that are strong so they can't be guessed or cracked. Security experts recommend that you make sure your password is hard for the bad guys to figure out so it should be long enough so people can't really guess. And some sites make you use a combination of lower and capital case letters, numbers, symbols, but only some symbols. And it goes on and on, making it hard to remember the password. Which kind of makes people reuse a password because once you find a good password that you can remember, you don't want to deal with more than one of them. And if you're nodding along thinking that passwords are a pain, go ahead and hit the like button. Hey, I know I'm not the only one. Because maintaining passwords are tied to a human being, many points of failure exist like reusing passwords, easily guessed passwords, getting phished, and lastly something that is not your fault, which is the company getting hacked and losing your credentials to hackers. The next level up in security protection is to use multi-factor authentication, which means you need to present two or more distinct factors of authentication to prove who you are. The username and password combo counts as one factor, and frequently the other factor is the website texting you a code to your phone. Another common method is having physical possession of a hardware token or software token generator which is tied to your account. So having MFA is definitely a big improvement in security, but a different approach is using passkeys. An overly simplified way of thinking about passkeys is that they're a pair of really long passwords that make them really hard to crack. And the pair of keys are related in a special connection, kind of like fraternal twins where they have a secret handshake that only they know about. The passkey authentication process is much like a secret handshake using the pair of keys. Only you and the website know of the nuances of that handshake because of the keys. And you will only freely communicate with each other after you are both satisfied that the handshake is good. The implementation of a passkey is that a pair of passkeys will be needed to be generated for each website. The secret or private key is stored in the secure storage container of your computer or mobile device, and you don't need to memorize it or type it in anywhere. The public key is stored at the website that you are logging into. The usage of these keys and the handshake is transparent to the user except when the computer or phone will ask you to unlock the device's secure storage container for those keys. That's why you're asked for your fingerprint or face ID or that hardware key. That all sounds great that the passkey is the easier and more secure way to log in to websites in the future. So let me show you how it works by walking through the process of creating a passkey for a website like GitHub. First, you have to create an account on GitHub using the standard password methodology. After you do that, then you can go ahead and request to create a passkey. Click on the upper right corner of the icon of your account, then select Settings. From there, go to the left menu and click on Password and Authentication, which will show you your sign-in methods. Here you see the verified email, you can change the password, and you can add a passkey. And then you can also sign in with your Google account. So we're going to go ahead and select add a passkey. 
You will see the validation that your system supports passkeys with a short explanation of what passkeys are. And if your browser does not support passkeys, you will see something that looks like this, which is from my Windows system. All right, so back on my Mac that does support the passkeys, I will click on Add Passkey. If you have never enabled the iCloud keychain for the account you are using, then you will get this message for you to turn on the iCloud keychain. I am pretty sure there is a similar process if you are working on a Windows machine. And if you're interested in seeing the process on a Windows machine, let me know in the comments below. So in this example, I didn't even have an Apple account, so let's set that up real quick. You'll be asked for your birthday to make sure that you are old enough to do this. And then you can type in your name, your email address, and password to create an account. And the next step is that you want a phone number so they can text or call you with a verification code. I'm going to go ahead and enter my phone number and then seconds later I will get a text with the six digit code. I type that into the boxes and it looks like I'm verified as they are asking me to agree to all the terms and conditions. Okay, now that I'm properly logged in, I am required to turn on advanced data protection in order for my Mac to do end-to-end -end encryption. All right, I think I'm done with all the stuff on Mac OS. Back to the screen from GitHub, we're gonna add a passkey. And when I click the button, it will ask me to verify by using my fingerprint to open the secure container. Once I do that, it will now tell me that I am successful in adding a passkey. I can pick a nickname for the passkey. I will go ahead and use ghub-passkey because it actually didn't let me use the term github within the nickname. Now we're back to the github settings page. We see that I have one passkey configured with the nickname that I just gave it. I can click on add passkey and then the Apple password app will pop up and show me my one passkey for github. And jumping over to my email, you'll see that uh, I got an email from GitHub letting me know that a passkey was added. From this point on, once you have the passkey created, you won't need your password to log in to this particular website. You can just use the passkey, and so the only thing your system is going to ask you is to open the secure container with your thumbprint or your picture or a hardware key. No more passwords. Okay, so I hope I have shown you that passkeys are easy to use. But are they safer than passwords? Well, passkeys are locked up in the secure enclave of your device, whether it's the computer or phone. And in order to access the secure enclave, you will need to supply biometrics like your fingerprint or retina scan. These biometrics are only used to open the enclave and not transmitted over the internet, therefore keeping the container secure. Ordinary users cannot access that secure enclave and make a copy of that private key, so you're not likely going to lose it or have it fished away from you because you don't know what it is to give away. And even if the hacker hacks into the website where you have your passkey stored, that is only the public key for that website that was compromised. And the key is matched only to your private key for the website, so those keys will not be able to be reused for another website. Passwords, on the other hand, once they're compromised on a website, they may be used to unlock your accounts on other websites if you have reused that same password. So passkeys are definitely safer than passwords. Quick question, do you think you'll switch to passkeys soon? Drop a comment below so we can compare experiences. Passkeys utilize public key encryption which much like HTTPS and SSL that you may have seen on most websites nowadays, uh, it's used to keep your data secure. There are two keys involved, a private key or secret key and a public key. The keys are basically a long sequence of characters so that they are hard to crack. The two keys are related but different and they have a special relationship where they can communicate with each other that no one else can. The rules of these keys are that they, number one, cannot derive one from the other, so having one key will not mean you can calculate the other one. 
2. Anything encrypted using one key cannot be decrypted with the same key. And number 3. Anything encrypted with one key can only be decrypted with the other key. The sequence for the handshake goes like this. Number 1. When you try to connect to a server, it will issue a challenge by encrypting some data using your public key. And once your computer gets that data, you should be the only person in possession of your own private key. So only you can decrypt the message and then respond to the challenge. And when the server sees your correct response to the challenge, it will grant you access. And now you can communicate. All right, as you can see, passkey authentication is a superior alternative to traditional passwords. They make login in simpler than passwords while providing more security. You don't have to remember the complex string of characters for a password. Passkeys cannot be easily guessed, stolen, or reused on other accounts as each pair of keys is cryptographically linked and are only good for a specific website. As user adoption continues to grow, passkey authentication will probably be the primary login method at websites before too long. For another video that I know you will enjoy, watch this video here. If you care about online security as much as I do, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future tips. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.